Hi everyone, Darren from Draytech Australia and New Zealand, presenting the Vigor 2765 series, which includes the non-wireless Vigor 2765, the Vigor 2765 AC, which features dual band 802.11ac Wi-Fi with up to 400 megabits per second on the 2.4 gigahertz band and up to 867 megabits per second on the 5 gigahertz band with Wave 2 2x2 MIMO, allowing two simultaneous wireless spatial streams. And the Vigor 2765VAC, which has the same Wi-Fi features, but also includes two FXS ports for VoIP. These models replaced the previous Vigor 2762 series, which had four models in the lineup. So one of the changes is that there's no more 802.11n Wi-Fi model, but 11ac is backwards compatible with 11n devices if you're still using those. Physically, there's no real changes front or back. We still have two USB 2 ports, which can be used to connect 3G or 4G LTE USB modems, or USB hard drives or flash drives for simple network attached storage, or USB printers, or the Draytech DT201U USB thermometer to monitor the device temperature. All models have an RJ11 WAN port, which can connect to NBN fiber to the node or fiber to the building type connections, which require a VDSL modem, or they can still work with ADSL if that's all you have access to. It also supports 35B super vectoring, which is a VDSL2 enhancement, which allows faster speeds over short distances. At the moment, I don't think that's available from any ISPs in Australia, but if or when it does become available, the 2765 series can support it. We also have 4 gigabit Ethernet LAN ports, but LAN port 4 can be configured as an Ethernet WAN port to support other types of NBN connections like fiber to the home, fiber to the curb, hybrid fiber coaxial, fixed wireless or satellite. Just bear in mind that the 2765 series only supports failover between two connections. It can't load balance two simultaneous connections. That goes for the USB ports as well. If you have a USB modem connected to one of those, that can be either the primary internet connection or it can be configured to fail over to that if the VDSL or Ethernet WAN connection goes down. The main changes are in the performance. Comparing the 2765 series to the older 2762 series, we've gone from 400 megabits per second to 700 megabits per second NAT performance. We have 2.9 times faster IPsec performance, up from 70 megabits per second to 200 megabits per second, and SSL is two times faster at 80 megabits per second compared to 40 megabits per second. Hardware acceleration boosts performance even further, taking NAT throughput up to 930 megabits per second. On the wireless models, around the back we have a WPS button which makes connecting devices securely a bit easier. We still have SMA connectors for our antennas which allows higher gain antennas to be fitted instead of the standard units if you want to extend the range. Draytech have the ANT1205 and ANT1207 available or the directional ANT2520. One other change is we now have 400 megabits per second on the 2.4 gigahertz band compared to 300 megabits per second on the older 2762 Wi-Fi models. Okay, let's log into the web user interface. So here we have our usual Draytech dashboard, which gives us a summary of everything happening. Up the top here, we can see I'm connected to LAN port one. This is the non-Wi-Fi 2765 model, but for the wireless models, we'd also be able to see here if the Wi-Fi is broadcasting on both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. Scrolling down, notice if I mouse over the title bars, I have the option to hide anything I don't want to see here. Under IPv4 internet access, I can see if it's online, which it isn't because I don't have it connected to anything. If it was, we'd also see what our WAN IP address is and how long it's been up. Under interface, we get little graphics to show us which ports are connected. Under security, we can see how many VPNs are connected. Expanding out my Vigor shows which optional licenses have been activated and when they expire. That includes subscription for the WCF or web content filter, app enforcement license, and the free DRE DDNS license. Up the top of the menu, we have the usual quick start wizards to make it easier to get online, set up a VPN client or server. On Wi-Fi models, we'd also see a wizard to set up the Wi-Fi. Bear in mind, these wizards just make these tasks easier. They can still be done manually with more detail elsewhere in the menu. Under WAN general setup, we can configure our WAN ports. We see WAN 1 is set to always on. WAN 2 is disabled. That's our Ethernet WAN port on port 4. 
WAN 3, that's our USB WAN port, is also set to failover. If I enable WAN 2 and set it to always on and save, after it reboots, we see that now WAN 1 is set to failover. If I check back in on WAN 2, we see that active mode is greyed out, so we can't change it to failover. The reason for that is we can't have more than one WAN set to always on, and at least one of them needs to be. We can't have all active WANs set to failover. To change WAN 2 back to failover, we need to change WAN 1 or WAN 3 to always on. If you need to load balance two or more active WANs, you'll need to step up to the 2865 series or above. WAN Internet Access is where we enter our ISP details for each WAN. LAN General Setup is where we can change our local IP address range and we can have two subnets. The second subnet will enable once we set up VLANs. If I click on Details page, I can also change the DHCP server details. Under VLAN, we can have up to eight VLANs, which can be either port-based or tag-based. As I mentioned, once I enable VLANs and select one to apply to the second subnet, it will automatically enable that second subnet. Once it reboots, if I check again, it is now enabled. Bind IP to Mac allows reserving IP addresses in the DHCP pool to particular devices. LAN port mirroring is featured, which is useful for troubleshooting certain situations. It has a hotspot web portal if you want to run a public Wi-Fi hotspot. If I click on an index there, I can set up the portal with a landing page. If I select various hotspot login, I can prompt people to log in with Facebook, Google or a pin via SMS. Save and Next takes me to options to change the landing page layout and so on. If you'd like more information about the hotspot web portal, I'll include links in the description below to more information. NAT is where we can set up any port forwarding rules we might need. I'll include a link to our recent webinar on this topic, which discusses the difference between port redirection, DMZ, open ports, port triggering, and ALG. Hardware acceleration allows us to boost NAT performance up to 930 megabits per second from the standard max of 700 megabits per second, and we can enable it or disable it here. If you'd like more information about what hardware acceleration is and how it works, I'll include a link below to our recent webinar talking about new product releases in 2020. Hardware acceleration is discussed around the six and a half minute mark. The firewall is object based and down under object settings is where we create the objects. We have options here for IP objects, IP groups, IPv6 objects and groups, service type objects, keywords, file extensions, even country objects if you want to allow or block anything coming from certain countries. CSM Content Security Management. Under App Enforcement Profile, we can create up to 32 profiles to block apps with just a single click. These profiles can also be set to a schedule under the firewall filter setup. So you could, for example, block access to social media by certain users during business hours. URL access control allows you to block access to certain websites. Web content filter or WCF has an optional subscription service, or you can configure it manually. If I click on a profile up the top here, you can enter keywords you want to block or allow. And down here, you can do the same thing with general categories. Bandwidth management, we can set session or bandwidth limits and alter the QoS settings. Under app QoS, we can select applications we want to prioritize with a single click. VPN remote access, the 2765 series supports two simultaneous VPNs. If I go to remote dial-in user or LAN to LAN, we can set up up to 32 profiles of each. Just bear in mind only two will be able to connect at once. Once again, if you need more than two active VPNs, you'd need to step up to the 2865 series or above, but these are great routers for homes and small businesses to connect to a head office via LAN to LAN VPN, for example, where a single VPN would be all that you'd really need. In the Wi-Fi models, we'd also get the 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz Wi-Fi settings in the menu here. So here you can set up the Wi-Fi password on both the 2.4 and five gigahertz bands and all of the other Wi-Fi features offered by Draytech routers, including airtime fairness and band steering. System maintenance is where we go to reboot, backup, or upgrade firmware, amongst other things. Dashboard control is another spot you can disable items showing on the dashboard page, or if you deleted them and want to put them back again. Diagnostics has a bunch of tools for troubleshooting. 
and under central management we can manage up to two Vigor APs. The Vigor 2765 series can also be managed using the Vigor ACS2 or Vigor ACS3 central management applications. So that is Dratex Vigor 2765 series router range, which come with a two year back to base warranty. For more information about all Dratec products, please check out our website at www.dratec.com.au. If you have any questions, please comment below or send an email to sales at dratec.com.au or just give us a call on 02983888899. Links below to the Vigor 2765 series product page and to a test drive of the web user interface so you can check that out in more detail. Please like and subscribe below and give the bell a click if you'd like a notification of new videos as we put them up. Thanks and bye for now.